Something tells me I've been dreaming of someone who was never real. It seems I've changed a thousand ways. I wish I looked the way I feel. Break me. Pioneer Village is now hiring costume tour guides for our summer season. Help bring history to life. <gasps> we should all apply for this. I'm not sure I want to spend the summer wearing a hot, itchy costume and baking tea biscuits. It wouldn't just be that. We'd be taking care of animals and gardening. I'm allergic to everything you just said. Why are you guys so down on this? It sounds like fun. Not to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with this century too if you don't mind. You guys are too picky. I'm going to phone the Pioneer Village right now. Go get him. I could deal with my friends not being interested in the job, but I was really excited about it. Would it have killed them to be a little more encouraging? Oh, I'm never going to remember all these names and dates. Yeah, I don't like history tests either. No, this is for my job interview at the Pioneer Village. I have to give a speech about Elkford as if it was 1885. Then just write it on your hand. What's wrong? Mama, mouse! Calm down. He's more scared of you than you are of him. <laughs> I'm not scared. <laughs> I just didn't want to step on him. Ah, uh, there's crumbs everywhere. Another one? No, but this one ate my energy bars. You shouldn't buy those things anyway. They're just overpriced granola bars. Well, they were my overpriced granola bars. But don't worry, I'll take care of our furry little freeloader. Adam Spitz, don't you dare hurt him. Of course not. But this house isn't big enough for me and that mouse. Does that mean you're moving out? You're a riot, Sharon. A real riot. And that's how Slimy River became the town of Elkford. Thank you. So, be honest, what did you think? I was up all night writing it. Not bad. It's a good start. A good start? You might want to take out some of the dates. It doesn't sound very natural. Yeah, and you should put in some details that make it sound like you really lived back then. Hmm, so you think it needs work? Well, a little. You wanted feedback, right? Yeah, of course. Thanks, guys. I guess I'd better go and work on it some more. Don't count on getting a study room. They were all booked. Well, I'll find an empty room somewhere. <clears throat> hey, my film! Sorry, when do we get a dark room? <clears throat> Welcome to Elkford Pioneer Vill... No, wait. Hello. You must be new in town. May I show you around Elkford? Excuse me, which way is the main office? I'm new and <laughs> Elkford's a lot bigger than my old high school. The office is right through there. Thanks. And every <laughs> fall, Mother and I make blueberry Preserves? <laughs> <laughs> Oops! Sorry! Only one loser per closet. Welcome to Elkford High, new girl. <laughs> oh, Sharon gets weirder every year. <laughs> My name's Sharon. I'm sorry you didn't have a nicer welcome. That's okay. I'm Winnie. It's nice to meet you. You have a lovely closet. <laughs> it's not exactly mine. I was just borrowing it to rehearse. <gasps> Are you an actress? 
Not really, but I do have a kind of audition. I bet you'll get it. You were really convincing. Aw, oh, you only heard two seconds of it. And now I'm craving blueberry preserves. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. You can hang out in my closet any time. Sharon, could you tell me where the main office is? My timetable's all messed up. How did you get four lunches in a class instead of four classes and a lunch? Just lucky. Come on, we'll go fix this. Hey, after school, do you want to meet my friends? I'd love to. I just moved from Saskatoon, and I don't know anyone. I hate that we had to move before the end of the school year. Yeah, that's rough. But I'm glad I met someone nice right away. What a freaky coincidence! I can't believe we both collect swizzle sticks. I can't believe anybody does. Uh, are you working this summer, Winnie? I'm going to answer phones for my dad's business, but I wish I could work at the Pioneer Village with Sharon. If I get the job, you'll get it. And Sharon, I know you don't call it acting, but it totally is. Well, I would have to create a character, and there is a lot of Penny, why didn't you tell me about the acting gig at the Pioneer Village? Well, you're my agent. You're supposed to know these things. Maybe you should play the part of a real woman that lived here. Like, pick a specific historical person. That's a good idea. Can I help you write it? Sure, if you really want to. Hi, guys. <gasps> Guess what? They let me have the locker right next to Sharon's. I got them to put me in your home room, too. Do you mind? No, that's great. I'll see you in class then. Okay, later. Wow, locker and homeroom buddies. I guess. What? You just met Winnie yesterday, right? So? She's new. She's just being friendly. Sheesh. You guys are so critical lately. I'll see you later. These history books are all about men. Didn't the pioneer women do anything? I bet they did tons. They just didn't write it down. Oh, this one did. Look, the Journal of Eliza Bell. She was Alkford's first school teacher. I could be her for my audition. That's perfect. And I could be all teachery like. I miss Eliza Bell, the schoolmistress, and I don't want to see any fidgeting on my tour. Oh, that's great. I'll write it down for you. What are you doing? I'm bringing in an expert. Okay, our perpetrator is a gray field mouse, two inches long. He is considered harmless, but highly annoying. Now, go find him. Adam, he's an indoor cat. He doesn't know anything about mice. Sure he does. He has animal instincts. I'm pretty good at mouse catching. Maybe I can help. How many have you caught? Just one, but lots of times. My pet mouse, Houdini. Oh, Adam, this is my friend Winnie. She just moved here. Winnie, my brother Adam. Hi. Ooh, nice grip. Are you a bodybuilder? No, <laughs> but I get that a lot. <laughs> Lawrence is acting weird. The mouse is behind the fridge. Not for long. <laughs> Leave the poor thing alone. That poor thing chewed a hole in my wrestling shorts. Oh, speaking of clothes. I thought you might want to wear this to your audition. Oh, it's beautiful. It was my Halloween costume last year. I'm sure it'll fit you. I tried on your jacket, and we're exactly the same size. Thank you. When did you try on my jacket? You're going to look perfect. There he is. OK, now you keep him cornered while I go get a box. I told you. You're a long way from King of the Jungle, aren't you? We better hurry. If we're late for gym, Miss Budovich makes us run laps. <gasps> Hello, ladies. We're in a rush, Nina. I thought I should warn you not to get your hopes up about the Pioneer Village job. I'm applying, too. And next to me, your audition is going to look like bad dinner theater. 
you're the one who should worry, because Sharon and I wrote an amazing speech for her audition. It's totally unique. Unique? Is that code for weird? No, it's code for Sharon's audition is going to blow yours away. Now, excuse us. Oh, you don't scare me. I've got my best people writing my speech. You really stood up to Nina out there. Hey, nobody disses my friend. Nice. Thanks. You're up. One, two, three. Sweet! A for effort, but your technique needs a little work. No, it doesn't. She made the basket. Yeah, but there's a right way and a wrong way. And Sharon did it the right way. Look, I'm captain of the girls' team. I know what I'm talking about. Right, Sharon? Look, it went in the net. Who cares how it got there? Fine, whatever you want to hear. <laughs> I think she's feeling a little jealous of our friendship. Not Maria. She isn't like that. Don't be so sure. What do you recommend? Brown bagging it. Okay, Sharon's fan club is really starting to get on my nerves. Tell me about it. In gym, I tried to give Sharon some tips, and when he got totally protective, she jumped all over me. Where's Sharon off to? I don't know, but I can't stay either. I have an AV club meeting. See you later, okay? Connor, don't leave me alone with Winnie! Hi. Um, where'd Sharon go? She wanted to work on her speech. Actually, I'm glad because I was hoping you and I could talk. Hey, sorry I didn't join you for lunch. I was working on my speech. Um, but I'm totally free now if you want to go hang out at Life Cycles. Oh, you wouldn't want to hang out with someone as childish as me. Don't you think you've outgrown our friendship? What are you talking about? You know, if you think a friend is someone who sucks up to you all the time, then you and Winnie deserve each other. I don't get it. I only asked if Maria wanted to hang out, and she freaked. That's so childish. You know, sometimes old friends drift apart. Maybe you've outgrown Maria. What did you just say? I said maybe you've outgrown Maria. Suddenly, something felt really wrong. Why was Winnie using the exact same words Maria did? What was going on? I have to call Maria. Oh! oh. Shh! Why are you sitting here? I'm gonna catch the mouse. Check it out. When he goes for the bait, I yank the string, the box drops, and I've got him. Whatever. I need to use the phone. Don't! You'll scare him off. Come on, this is urgent. <sighs> Fine. We've probably scared him all the way into the basement by now. Or maybe not. Look. Ah, uh, Sharon! Wong here. Hi, it's Sharon. I want to straighten things out. I think we got our wires crossed. And I think Winnie might have made it happen. Meet me at the beanball court in the park. Yeah, Winnie did say something to me today. She had a lot to say. Like what? Oh, just that I'm way too critical of you, that you've outgrown our friendship, that if I even want to stay friends with you, I'd better back off. What? Your new best friend is very protective. She is not my new best friend. I never said that. Why would she say that to you? Was she trying to wreck our friendship? You want my opinion? Please. Winnie either wants you all to herself, or she really believes she's your best friend and she was trying to protect you from me. Well, then she's a few peas short of a casserole. Well, so what are you going to do? I guess I'll have to tell her that she's the one who needs to back off. But first, maybe my real best friend could teach me how to do a real layup. You're on. Morning, Sharon. <gasps> Whoa! You dyed your hair? Yeah! I did it last night. Look, it came out the same color as yours. Exactly the same. Oh. So, what did you want to talk about? Um, right. Uh, here's the thing. I think we need to be less together 
from now on. I'm sorry? It's not you, it's me. Well, kind of. But anyway, uh, I need some space. <gasps> You're breaking up with me? I, I w wouldn't say that exactly. Why? I did everything to make you like me. You're my only friend in Elkford. That's why you need to meet some other people. I can't be your only friend. Here, it's your pioneer costume. I wouldn't feel right using it. You know what I think, Sharon? I think you were just using me. What? I helped you with your audition, and I built up your confidence, and now you don't need me anymore, so you're ditching me. All I wanted was to be your friend. <laughs> You call this an audition speech? Hi, I'm a pioneer. This is my village. Look, I'm sensationally talented, but even I can't turn garbage into gold. The audition is on Saturday, people. So I want you to write a new speech, and this time I... Ugh, what's your problem? <laughs> I don't have a problem. Sharon's the one with the problem. Sharon? As in Sharon Spitz? Yes. I didn't know you could be fired from being a best friend. I can't believe she dumped you after all your help with her speech. Here. Thanks. <sighs> Wait, why are you being so nice to me? Because I know what it's like when your friends let you down. Now. Tell Nina all about it. Oh, what a crummy day. Hey, Moby. Want to meet Sharon? Adam, you caught the mouse. Yeah, I bought one of these humane mouse traps at the hardware store. I named him Moby because he was harder to catch than Moby Dick. It's really hard to stay mad at something so cute. He's adorable. Come on, let's take him out to the field and let him go. Right now? But we just met. Mom isn't going to let you keep him. <sighs> I know. Maybe your friend Winnie could take him. She likes mice. Mm, please don't say that name. I had to give Winnie the brush off. Why? She was nice. Yeah, but she got a bit too attached to me. It's getting creepy. Of course she's going to be a little clingy. She doesn't know anybody else yet. Give the girl a break. Thanks, Adam. I wasn't feeling quite guilty enough. I guess I could go see her after my interview tomorrow. I should thank her for helping me with my speech. That's more like it. Laszlo the hamster's on. you like this, Moby. Winnie? Sharon, what are you doing here? You remember what I said about needing space, right? Don't flatter yourself. I'm not here to see you. I'm here with a friend. You are? Oh, that's great. I'm so glad you're meeting people. Who is it? Ah! You're here with Nina? Some people value my friendship. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can we get started? Thank you. I'm Mr. Brocklehurst, and I'd like to welcome you all to our pioneer village. I'm delighted to see so many young people with a passion for history. Now, we have many auditions today, so may I have a volunteer to start us off? Ah, thank you, Miss... Uh... Nina Harper, sir. I hope you don't mind the period costume. I want it to be authentic. Whenever you're ready, Miss Harper. Good morning, everyone. I'm Miss Eliza Bell, your schoolmistress. Now, I don't want to see any fidgeting on my tool. <laughs> you stole my speech! Young lady, settle down. Winnie, how could you give her my speech? I know you're mad at me, but... I'm afraid you'll have to leave, young lady. You need to behave a little more maturely to get a position here. <sighs> and don't you be coming back until you learn to play well with others, Missy! <laughs> Touching. Sharon's getting comfort in her time of woe. Too bad about the Pioneer Village job, but what did you expect after throwing such a hissy fit? 
If it's any comfort, the interviewer said that your speech, sorry, my speech, was, and I quote, simply inspiring. So I guess that means you got the job? Well, duh, of course. I start training this afternoon. Just think, while you're cleaning sneeze guards at some fast food restaurant this summer, I'll have a sweet acting job. Ah, oh, it's good to be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the classified stink. Do you guys want to check out the student job bank after school? I'm in. You guys go ahead. There's something Adam and I have to do. What a strange week. The mouse started out as a pest, but ended up as Adam's friend. And Winnie went from being a friend to being a total pest. Bye, Moby. In the end, we said goodbye to both of them. I just wish I'd figured out Winnie before she handed Nina my perfect summer job. Sir, I don't understand my motivation for painting this fence. <laughs> <laughs>